Welcome to Zoo Babies, where it's time to say hello to some amazing new members of the animal kingdom. First up, let's welcome into the world this baby anteater, who's been riding on its mother's back since it was born. Keepers and officials at the San Diego Zoo say this baby won't be able to walk on its own for another three to four weeks. Female anteaters give birth to just one offspring, which will stay close by until its mother becomes pregnant again. The baby will spend much of the first part of its life riding on its mother's back until it's almost half her size. Anteaters are found in the wild in South and Central America and are known for their long tongues. They use them to reach into termite and anthills and they can reach up to two feet in length. They also have long noses and a great sense of smell. Over in Washington in the United States, the National Zoo recently opened its new enclosures and this giant panda was the main attraction. The giant panda habitat and Asia trail exhibit covers nearly six acres of the zoo and gives visitors the chance to get up close to the animals and experience the panda's native environment as though they were in the wild. The zoo's staff have been watching the pandas closely and have used their observations to create a new habitat. This trail gives people the opportunity to become immersed in a habitat-like experience. They're experiencing um, the areas that these animals live in, in Asia. And uh, it's very, very important, and when people think about conservation, we sometimes get focused on the animal, but the habitat is very, very important. Visitors to the Asia Trail will have a chance to see seven endangered animals, including these red pandas, whose favorite food is bamboo and who live mostly in trees. They like to hang upside down on a tree branch by their tail. What about these water rats known as otters? Otters have webbed feet and broad tails that help them when they're swimming underwater. They have poor eyesight, but keen senses of hearing, smell, and touch. Perhaps they're hanging out in the water to hide from this clouded leopard that's patrolling the area. Clouded leopards get their name from the funny dark edges on their coat, which are said to be shaped like clouds. Over in another enclosure, this sloth bear, which is also called the honey bear because, you guessed it, its favorite food is honey, may have found some honey on the glass to its cage. This is really a, a whole different way of exhibiting animals for us. It gets our visitors right up close, right up against the glass, or right across a really clear view through the moats. Um, it's the first time that we've had people exhibits that get lots of interactivity, lots of ways for people to ask questions um, and look for answers through the exhibits and the graphics. Meanwhile, the sloth bear is off to look for more honey. This is an Indian ringneck parakeet called AJ, who's been performing all kinds of tricks for the TV cameras in his home in Florida. AJ likes to show off his many sporting skills, which range from basketball to gymnastics and golf. What a clever bird! Two female polar bears at Germany's Nuremberg Zoo recently became mothers and the cubs are hiding deep in these caves built in the bear's enclosure. Zookeepers have been keen not to disturb the cubs since they were born, and at the moment, they don't even know how many cubs are in there. According to officials at the zoo, the bears gave birth to their cubs two weeks apart from each other. Polar bears are very sensitive and can reject their cubs if they're disturbed, so the zoo has been careful to leave them alone. The polar bear mother will nurse her cubs on milk that's rich in fat. When she's ready to show her cubs off to the zoo, she'll bring them outside, 
so they can become used to walking and playing. Female polar bears love their cubs and are very protective of them. But these keen visitors can't wait to meet the new arrivals. Over in Ireland, a female white rhinoceros has been born in Dublin Zoo. The calf, which has not yet been named, was recently shown to the public for the first time. White rhinos were once hunted to near extinction, and they're listed as a critically endangered species. It's the second largest land animal after the elephant. And this baby rhino had a grand old time, running around the enclosure under the watchful eye of her mother. White rhinos like to drink twice a day, if water is available. But if conditions are dry, they can live for four or five days without water. And hungry rhinos can spend about half of the day eating. Meanwhile, in Berlin's Tierpark Zoo, keepers proudly presented a new Siberian tiger cub to the public. The male cub is only six weeks old and has been given the special name Antares after a star in the Milky Way. The press are very excited about seeing Antares for the first time and lots of people crowded round with their cameras as the young cub was still getting used to his surroundings and walking tentatively amongst the crowd. Berlin's Tierpark Zoo is the second biggest breeding center for Siberian tigers in the whole of Europe and keepers were very happy to have another addition to its growing tiger family. Yes, it's the first time in two years that we've had a male Siberian tiger cub here. His father was also born and bred here, and this is his first son. And it makes it somewhat special, because his father Darius has become a mascot for us. Antares spent some of his time hiding in the basket. Where's he gone? Here he is. The zookeepers know that breeding programs for the Siberian tiger are important to keep the species safe. That's why breeding in zoos is so important, so that as many as possible can be bred to keep this type of species intact. When Antares grows up, he'll be one of the largest tigers in the world, along with other Siberian and Bengal tigers. He will also grow a woolly mane of fur around his neck. And Tari's mother, with her long, sharp teeth, waits for her son to wrap up his big day of publicity. What do you want to be when you grow up? What about a wildlife artist? Imagine being around free-roaming animals every day and painting their picture. Sounds exciting, doesn't it? Pip McGarry is a talented painter based in the south of England, and ever since he was a child, he's loved painting animals. Pip taught himself to paint, and he's been doing it for 27 years. Do gains, we gain, everyone gains. Um, it, the animals gain, we can raise funds for the, to help the zoo um, so, uh, with their work with endangered species. Um, uh, and, you know, for myself, I, I can make a living from selling my, my paintings. So, so um, I think it's a, it's a win, 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 win situation. Eight years ago, he asked Marwell Zoological Park if he could become their artist in residence. The deal he offered was simple. He'd have animals to paint, and part of the revenue from sales of his paintings would go towards the zoo's conservation work, as well as raising its profile. The zoo agreed. They don't pay Pip, but since he took on the job, he's earned a good living from the pictures he sells. It's a feeling of being close to nature, I think, is, is one of the most important things. And I think when, you know, certainly when I paint, uh, you know, I think if a person takes a painting away of the wildlife, they're taking a little bit of, of nature back with them. It's a little window into, into, um, into the wild. Pip wants his work to truly recreate the spirit of the animals he paints. His pictures sell for thousands of pounds each through the internet, gallery exhibitions, and above all, through word of mouth. 
Pip says he has no favourite animal, he loves painting them all. From big cats to meerkats, he's made his childhood dream a reality. At more than 100 million years old, turtles are among the oldest species on the planet. This turtle in the aquarium at London Zoo is safe behind glass. But in the wild, some of his relatives are on the endangered list. The Zoological Society in London has joined forces with conservation groups in Mozambique to find new ways to protect the future of green sea turtles. Alison Shaw is playing a key part in the research and conservation of the sea turtles and is very passionate about the project. Most of the turtles that come up are green turtles, although we do get a few hawksbills. Now, while we know that the turtles come and nest, we know that we've started protecting them, but we don't know anything about where the turtles go after they're finishing nesting. So once they've laid their eggs, they'll go back into the ocean for two or three years, and we don't know where they go to feed or to forage, where they go to grow or where they go to reproduce. This preserved turtle shows how a mature creature could look. Turtles can live to over 100 years old. The largest turtle ever found was five feet in length and weighed 395 kilograms. We hope to raise funds so that we can satellite tag some more of Claudia, our, 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 our turtles, um, friends. Sea turtles can spend up to three years at sea, but so much of what they do remains a great mystery. Say hello to these cheeky monkeys who are quietly enjoying hanging out in the tree. They've had a hard day climbing up and down, looking for food and trying to stay out of trouble. This mother hugs her tired baby as they rest up in the tree. Orangutans belong to a group known as primates, which includes lemurs, apes and humans. In fact, we are the only primates which are not adapted for a tree-dwelling lifestyle. Almost half of all known primate species are endangered. These monkeys are protected and watched over by zoo staff and placed in breeding programs so that their numbers continue to grow. All primates have great eyesight, which makes up for their weak sense of smell. This is a rare monkey known as a golden lion tamarind. It's covered in golden fur and in the wild lives in isolated parts of the eastern Atlantic Brazilian rainforest. These are vervet monkeys and they range throughout southern and east Africa. Vervet monkeys mostly eat fruit, but they also eat leaves, seeds and insects. And check out these gorillas. These proud specimens are the largest of the living primates and live in the forests of Africa in the wild. Gorillas move around by walking on their knuckles and are very intelligent, quiet creatures. Now for a closer look at a zoo baby we visited last time at Buenos Aires Zoo in Argentina, where a family of red-necked wallabies are getting used to their surprise recent addition. The new arrival, an albino wallaby, made his first public appearance together with his somewhat darker family members, who've been living at the zoo for a few years. According to Vanessa Astore, head of biology at the zoo, the albino baby will be able to breed like any other wallaby, and is even likely to have normal coloured offspring. they are usually grey in colour, with a rusty red hue visible in the neck area. After being pregnant for a period of just 30 days, wallabies give birth to a joey, which then climbs up the hairs of its mother's stomach to get to the pouch. At the age of four months, they begin to leave the pouch for longer periods of time, and they leave it for good at around nine months. This is a wild black-breasted buzzard, which is able to do something quite rare and special. 
It can break open emu eggs with a stone. The black-breasted buzzard recently visited the Birds of Prey show at the Territory Wildlife Park in Darwin, Australia, and circled overhead before landing near a replica emu egg. Looking somewhat nervous at first, the bird instinctively headed straight for the stone, picked it up in her beak and began throwing it at the egg. This footage was filmed by German tourists during famous bird trainer David Irwin's Birds of Prey presentation. Although it contained small pieces of food as a reward, the fake hollow egg was obviously not what the wild bird had expected. So we're uh, pretty excited about this because uh, it's not often that you get a, a world first and uh, this wild buzzard breaking an egg is, is as far as we understand a world first to have it uh, uh, doing this sort of thing um, and actually capturing it on film. The only other bird which is reported to use stones to break eggs is the Egyptian vulture. This zoo in Cologne, Germany, is pleased to announce the birth of a baby llama named Raffaella. The llama is a South American camelid, which is a term used for animals such as camels and guanacos. Camelids are large animals with slender necks and long legs, and only eat leaves and plants. Llamas can vary in color from white to gray, or in this baby llama's case, black. Female llamas are known as dams, and they're not able to lick their babies, as they have an attached tongue that won't reach further than half an inch outside of their mouths. Both mother and child are doing well. This baby was born last Thursday, exactly a week ago. As you can see, it's doing well. It's drinking, and the mother is also doing well. Llamas' ears are rather long and curved slightly inward, they're kind of banana-shaped. Both llamas and camels are cloven-hoofed animals, but they don't walk on their toes, their hooves, but rather on their entire foot. Every layman is surprised that llamas and camels even though they look so different, are very closely related. It's a fact that's proved by the parasites, or the lice, which live on them. The parasites are practically identical. This is because parasites develop much slower over the course of the evolution than the animals they live on. Llamas' toes are more spread out than camels' toes, and they have short, bushy tails that feel woolly and soft. Spring-like temperatures and bright sunshine at the zoo warmed little Raffaella as she strolled through the cage with her mother. More than 100,000 years ago, Elephants, lions and rhinos roamed from the Red Sea to the Gulf before climate changes made them extinct and turned the area into the dry Arabian Peninsula. Today, a wildlife reserve in the Gulf is trying to prevent the various species native to the deserts of this oil-rich region from suffering the fate of their ancestors. In the sandy outskirts of Sharjah, in the United Arab Emirates, the Wildlife Center is home to the world's largest collection of animals and birds that live in the Arabian Peninsula. Many of the 45 or so species on display are on the verge of extinction. More than 1,200 residents call the Wildlife Center home, including an Arabian leopard, one of the rarest animals in the world, as well as lizards, snakes, rodents and foxes. The Wildlife Center is uh, here in the desert park of Sharjah is unique, we think, because uh, it contains uh, the largest and the most uh, complete collection of the wildlife uh, in the Arabian Peninsula. Uh, again, another factor is that we consider this center as a unique 
the whole center is de being designed in a way that uh, the visitors feels he is in cages and the animals are in the free. Most people have not seen all these animals in their natural environment. So through this center, we try to provide uh, these animals for people to see what kind of animals exist in the desert. At the same time, they will appreciate them or respect uh, the habitat they live in. And that's the aim to uh, pass a message. Desert have a lot of animals, beautiful animals. We must conserve it and we must protect it. This wild cat is a hunter of small mammals, birds, and other creatures of a similar size. Its favorite food is meat. And it's one of the rare creatures that the wildlife park plays home to. It's very enjoyable for both adults and children. What about this funny looking creature? It's called a rock hyrax, and it loves living in trees. The reptiles and rodents are kept in glass-fronted cages. And since many desert animals are nocturnal, sections of the center are kept dark during visiting hours, lighting up only when it's closed for the night. This lizard is well camouflaged on the wall. It has a sandy color, so it blends into its environment easily. This long snake is having a nap behind the glass. And this long creature looks like a sandy crocodile. Larger animals such as gazelles, ostriches, leopards and baboons are all kept outside and can be seen from behind the mirrored glass. The air conditioning is great. The sounds make you feel that you're in their environment. It's beautiful. These olive baboons are preening themselves quietly. The olive baboon got its name from its coat, which at a distance is a shade of green-gray. These wild wolves are watched by an excited group of children, while outside the flamingos roam near the water and are watched by the gazelles. Gazelles are very swift animals and run at a very high speed. They tend to live in herds and will eat less coarse, easily digestible plants and leaves. And this enormous flightless bird is called an ostrich. This wildlife park has animals for everybody. Join us next time on Zoo Babies for lots more chicks, calves and cubs. <laughs>